Welcome to the second part of creating a game model and implementing a formation. So on this part, last the first video we went over thirds of the field, um, our defensive third, middle third, attacking third. And we went through defensive organization to attacking transition to attacking organization and then back to defensive transition and defensive organization. We gave the example of a 3-5-2 formation, but when we are low block in our own defensive third, it actually is 5-3-1-1. One, one. As we won the ball and we transition into attacking transition, the formation opened up and it's different now going into the middle third and then into attacking organization into the final third it's a completely different formation. It's no longer a 3-5-2. You actually have four straight across the top with two behind and then one. You're looking at seven players in attack in that 3-5-2 and attacking organization phase in the attacking third. So that's what we went over last time, but this video I'm going to use to explain how to pick kind of a defensive game model. And a defensive game model is you could sit low, and this would be a low block. If this was your line of confrontation right here, your team would be pretty much from here back. That's defensive organization. We can call this an aggressive zonal defense. So if the ball came in to our zone, we would immediately press this ball very aggressively and try to turn this over and start attacking transition. Now, if you wanted to run a team with a very aggressive press, like Barcelona or Jurgen Klopp's teams at Dortmund and Liverpool, then we can keep an ultra high line and we can just press. If it was a goal kick, we would just go on and press and press and press. And a press is much different than sitting back and playing an aggressive zonal press. A press actually involves, it could be from a, from a dead ball, it could be from the run of play where you automatically lose the ball and you go to try to win it back. The first player presses within 2.7 seconds to, to get to the player with the ball, the next player within 5 seconds, and then the next player after that. You have 3 to 5 players aggressively pressing the ball no matter where it is, and then you have players just outside of that, and then you have players on the perimeter all the way back so a long ball doesn't beat them. Now, obviously soccer is a free-flowing grant game, so if our idea is to really press and hold out very, very high line and we're going to be very aggressive, push the team up to half field. Well, what happens if the other team breaks the press and starts to carry the ball or pass the ball very rapidly down the field? We have to drop. And eventually, we slow the ball down, and maybe even though our game plan was a high press and an aggressive press, because of what's happened in the game, we end up in a low defensive block, maybe a line of five, line of four, and one, and now we're playing aggressive zonal defense in here. So regardless of what your game plan is, remember that soccer is a free moving game and you have to be prepared to play all different ways. Now, if the team is significantly better than you, maybe a high press is something that you don't want to do because they're going to play through you. If the other team's forwards are so much faster than your center backs and one ball over the top, beats you, it might want to be a consideration. Maybe you want to take a little deeper drop with the center backs, maybe not press the field as much. Maybe instead of having them so wide, pinch them extra in, play them a little tighter. All these things are adjustments that you would make in your game model. Now, when you start the game, are you going to be a pressing team? Or maybe you're going to agree to sit at half field and aggressively zonal press when the ball comes over. Obviously, you could send two, three players. If I would do this, I would have pressing zones which are somewhere in here if I'm gonna hold half field as my line of confrontation my my pressing zones are gonna be in here right if this ball goes anywhere in here I'm gonna send one two three players in to press keep another one high so if we win it we initially can go so I have preset pressing zones if we're sitting in a low block obviously this area in here we do not want anybody getting to this area we have to press them like crazy and send them out. So for your game model, there's all sorts of factors involved. The length of the grass, is it turf, is it 95 degrees out, if it's 95 degrees maybe you don't want to high press all the time. Maybe you press for the first 15 minutes of the game 
and then for the next 30 minutes maybe you hold half field as your line and do aggressive zonal pressing. It really depends. Uh, I'll give you an example. We had four games in six days at the end of the season last year and we aggressively pressed like crazy for the first two games and then we dropped our line and then in the last game we had to sit very very deep and defend deep and look to counter because we just didn't have the legs to go out there for a fourth day in a row to aggressively press that ball. So your defensive game model, now remember, doesn't matter what formation you have. You have to say to yourself, your game model is how are you gonna play when you have the ball? And what is your strategy, what is your game model when you're defending? There's a lot of different options here. Now, I didn't get specifically into players' roles and all these types of things. I'm just trying to share some ideas about you need to have a defensive philosophy. And if your philosophy is to, to sit in a low block and aggressively zonal defend, that's fine. That's mentally, players have to be prepared to do that. And if you're going to aggressively high press, mentally, it's almost a different strategy. And if you're going to do both in one half, then the players have to be prepared for that. Now, remember, it is a free-flowing game, so even if you are pressing, they break the press, eventually you're going to have to funnel back, get yourself defensively organized, and then maybe you do play a low block for the next couple, couple seconds, couple minutes, whatever it takes. Then when you control the ball again, you work it in here. When you lose it, you press again. If they break it, you drop back. So players need to be problem solvers on the field. They need to be thinkers on the field because you can't instruct them nonstop. They have to instinctively know what to do. But your game model is the formula that they should be working off of. The game model kind of gives them the answer so they know what they should be doing. Now it's just a matter of implementing that game model. And remember, your game model can change from game to game. Even though me as a coach, I have a general philosophy that I like and a, and a general things that I value in the game. So our game model might change because they have a few special players. It might change because of the heat. It might change because of various factors, their formation. But essentially, my players know the way that we like to play. And we can make variations, but at the end of the day, they understand what the game model is.